Hey guys, Chris here for Toolman's Guitars and Basses. April 16 is a very special date for all of us who are so excited about the new Liquid Tension Experiment album. Today is especially exciting for me because I get to welcome John Petrucci on our channel. Hi John, hi, how are you man? Hello, I'm doing well, how are you? It's so great to have you back on the channel. I'm, I'm yeah. very excited. Uh, you know I'm a, a big fan of, of your music forever basically and uh, it's so great to, to see Liquid Tension Experiment being active again. Yeah, well, thank you for saying that. And uh, it, it's great to see you again. And thanks for doing this today. Um, yeah, LTE, something that a lot of people thought would never happen. Yeah. Um, as far as us getting back together after the first two albums. And here we are. It's album so, it, about to be out. It, it's like t 22 years, right? Since yeah. The second album. Yeah. Insane. I know. How come? You guys recorded the album now. Is there a special reason for it? Or was it just a, a sort of a, a spontaneous idea? Right. Well, the funny thing about 22 years is uh, my, my uh, our, our, our third child, we had twins, boy, girl, and then the second was born during the uh, recording sessions for LTE2. And so that's why there's a song on there called When the Water Breaks. Because my wife went into labor. No way. <laughs> yeah, so I could judge by how old my uh, our youngest daughter is, by how long <laughs> it's been since that album. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. You know what? We it, it's we've been asked like all, it's so often, all of us. You know, when is, would Liquid Tension Experiment ever get back together again? Would you ever do another album? And uh, so it, it certainly has been on, on all of our minds, and we definitely know or knew that there was a there was interest and a demand for it. And, you know, honestly, uh, the, the past year with just everybody being off the road, literally every musician, you know, there was no conflict of schedule anymore. So you, you really couldn't make that excuse. And uh, <laughs> we really don't live too far from each other. So you can't make that excuse. Um, and and right. uh, it started had you know just a few texts back and forth and oh this would be fun we should do it of course I I reunited musically with Mike Portnoy when he played drums on my solo album yes that came out last year so we we were like and we did that at the Dream Theater Studio in this very room that I'm in right now um, the drum kit was over there <laughs> and uh, so so Mike's drums were already set up and mic'd and I already recorded a record it's like you know let's just do it here. <laughs> And uh, it worked out perfectly, you know, it really did. It was so much fun. So great. Uh, the next obvious question is uh, the song writing process. I mean, yeah. as far as I know from, from Medi and uh, just like all the info you know about uh, all the LTE recordings, right. is that it's very much uh, like sort of created in the studio. Like you guys started jamming had a nice idea, recorded it, worked on it, and then sure. finalized it to be a song. Is it something that, that went on this time as well? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of different things that happened. For, first of all, it's uh, it, it the whole process is very quick. So it's not the type of thing that spans over five or six months, you know, it, wow. it's a few weeks. Um, it's a little bit of a combination, you know, myself and Jordan like to enter prepared. So, you know, we'll have little bits of ideas. I'll have guitar riffs and things. Uh, Jordan will certainly have chord progressions and different things, uh, different figures. And so this way, when we're together, you know, we, we kind of could pull from our little bag of, uh, um, of ideas, you know, whether we need them or not. Um, so that's part of it. But the, a bigger part probably is that, and we did this right from the get go when we, you know, first saw each other and started playing together in the room is that we'll jam, we'll have these extended jams, which are so much fun. And they'll go on for like a half hour or more 40 minutes. And of course, we record all of it. Yeah, uh, we did that. We did about four of those uh, during these sessions. And then, you know, we'll listen back. And we'll be like, yeah, oh, that part's really cool. Oh, I think somebody's on to something there that could be used in a song you know i love that groove you went into oh that rip that's the beginning of something cool and uh mike being the the organized person that he is you know will spend the night like making notes like okay from three minutes and five seconds to 412 there's a really cool guitar rip you were doing and so we'll start with some of that and we'll add in some of the ideas that jordan and i have and then we'll just like very collectively just go just start writing together and uh, 
it, it just happens really naturally. You know, people use this word chemistry a lot. Yeah. And there couldn't be a better word. You know, you just start playing something. The other guy joins in and, oh, that's cool. And you start organizing it. And what we did um, during these se sessions, which helps move it along a lot quicker. I know this is a long answer. But, um, oh, loving it. <laughs> what, what we did, too, is like we would record as we went. So like if we came up with a really cool section and, you know, everything was worked out, it's like, OK, let's track it. So, you know, then we were able to just from there build the song and, and continue it. And even if the section that we played, we decide later, oh, that really should be at the end. You know, we could edit and move it around. But yeah. we didn't have to go through. There was no like demo process or anything. Yeah. It just yeah. was kind of being done as we were writing it. And, wow. and that's that's the beauty of the whole project. That's what keeps it fresh and exciting and fun and interesting. That's that's so great. Maddie told a little bit about it, how, how the process went uh, yeah. when he was on the channel. And uh, and it's it's, I think, one of the most important things everyone should experience who plays in a band, who, mm -hmm. who creates music, this this um, the moment. Right. If you if you if you're in the zone, yes. and you have a chance to record it and work on it. It's probably the best reason for big smiles. While absolutely, playing, right? absolutely. There's nothing like that, you know, being in that flow state and just, uh, you know, time disappears and, you know, th there's just this thing happening. It, yeah. it's, it happens, uh, you know, in, in art a lot. And um, it certainly happened in, in this case. And it is it's a great, a great feeling. We actually, uh, as a bonus um, on this release, we included excerpts of some of those jams so you know not the whole things because it would be a ridiculous amount of music and sometimes we just meander on to these stupid things but we, we we picked out some cool sections and put it on the bonus disc that people could you know buy when, when one of the wow. formats that we're releasing so you could listen it's like being a fly in the wall and you can hear all the the nonsense and you know stuff that we were doing and, and maybe even like here oh i can hear that the song sort of came from this you know so that's we did we did let people into that side a little bit that's exciting that's really yeah. cool i had the chance to listen to the songs before they came out nice as, a, as part of the preparation of this interview which i cool. am super happy about and i gotta right. say i am absolutely blown away oh really, man the, the thank songs you. Are, are really really cool i feel some classic vibes like a, a bit of like scenes of a memory kind of yeah. vibes but uh, also very different obviously also because of tony playing the bass and and like right. it's it's so interesting sort of a mixture of uh, of beautiful old memories of of tradition of, of yeah. yours and uh, and also the, the new songs the new melodies the new ideas um i gotta say um Chef uh, uh, thank great. you. And I, I have a couple of questions about a few parts of songs. Sure. For example, <laughs> yeah. and I, ha I have a little note here. The beginning of uh, of Chris and Kevin's Amazing Odyssey. Yeah. What is that? Is that a bow? Yeah. So I, I actually didn't. Uh, I didn't witness those guys doing that. I I don't know if they did it like late one night when I wasn't <laughs> there or something. But Mike and Tony did did all these jams together. And there, there were so many things to choose from. And yeah, I believe Tony was playing an upright electric bass with a bow. Yeah, I'm pretty oh. sure that's what it was. Tony is such an awesome musician. He's so unique. And uh, he brought in like all this different stuff, you know, his Chapman stick, his basses, his upright bass, uh, all these different pedals. And you never know what he's going to reach for and go for. It's just <laughs> so unique sounding. You really, uh, I think on this album, even more than the other ones, you really hear Tony's personality Absolutely. Um, yeah. really strongly. And it, it's it's so cool. So cool. Crazy, crazy. And the other thing is Rhapsody in Blue. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's the most epic, I don't know, tonal journey. It's mm. such a great rendition or like recreation of that classic piece. Who came up with the uh, came up with the idea? Thank you. I'm, gl I'm glad you like it. It's actually a high point of the album for, for me and for all of us. We kind of love that. Really? Yeah, that, that's George George Gershwin for you. He'll do it. <laughs> well. Um, but, you know, that was Mike's idea originally when Liquid, several years ago, Liquid Tension Experiment did some touring. Yeah. We did, uh, you know, some select shows. And Mike had always wanted to do a, a, a an arrangement of Rhapsody in Blue. Even I, I remember when he brought it up, 
like everybody knows that song and the melody. It's been used so much. It's so familiar to us. I couldn't really picture like a ver like a rock version. I don't yeah, know why, yeah. but we we made this really cool arrangement and we uh, we played it live. It came out uh, on uh, some some of our own releases that we put out, uh, but we had never recorded a studio version. So, yeah, yeah. you know, fast forward 22 years. Well, not 22 years, however many years it was when we did that ago. That was like uh, in the two, 2000s, right? Yeah, 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 yeah you're yeah. right. So not as long. And uh, Mike said again, hey, you know, we never did a studio version. Would you guys be into putting this on this new album? And we were like, oh, that's like a 15-minute long song or so. It's like, sure. <laughs> we don't do have it. enough of those. <laughs> let's yeah, let's yeah. put it on. And right. uh, you, yeah. the funny thing is that even though, obviously, we didn't write it, the arrangement, it fits, to me at least, it fits right in with the rest of the songs. It, all, it just sounds like a prog instrumental rock <laughs> piece, right? It doesn't sound like a, a Gershwin. Uh, I mean, no. I, obviously... It's his song. You hear the melody is strong, but it just fits in. It doesn't stick out. It's like, wow, why would those guys do that? Yeah, yeah. It actually works really well. So it's, it's not odd at all. It feels yeah. perfectly I don't know, harmonic with, with the rest of the album. Awesome. And right. I know Jordan had a lot of fun. He has so many great sounds and things. I mean, that that's I've seen Jordan play that just on piano, like the piano only version. And it's like ridiculous, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, on this, he was able to use a whole bunch of different sounds and yeah. And, and really experiment and go crazy on that, which is cool. And I, actually, for, for people as well to know, the middle section where it kind of breaks down and it's really beautiful, beautiful section of the song, that's actually taken from one of the live shows, I think maybe the show in LA that we did. Yeah. Um, and we put that into this arrangement. So that's actually us live uh, from, oh, wow. from those years. Yeah, because it, you know, when we listen to it, we're like, how are we going to recreate that? Because it's such... <laughs> rubato time it's so loose like you know what's wrong with this we should just make that a little you know memento of yeah, that life yeah. and so we kept that in and i think it worked out really well absolutely absolutely yeah. it fits right in cool wow uh which brings me to the next part the the biggest moment for me in that song is where the heavy part begins where the actual rock rhythm guitar comes in and yeah. like oh my god that lick is so cool yeah and, and obviously my next question is what did you use to record the album ah what did i use to record the... The, yeah <laughs> i mean most of it is probably not going to be a huge surprise but i just yeah. really want to know what what you chose from your um uh, right from your well equipment. i happen to have what i used right here <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, i use this guitar so this is uh of course my ernie ball music man um signature majesty guitar which is like my favorite thing on the planet neck through um, this is a purple nebula color, which was a limited that we did. Um, three piece neck, which is so beautiful. I don't know if you yeah. can see uh, that. You can see it. Yeah. 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 And so this was the guitar on, on the record. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm actually celebrating 20 years with Ernie Ball Music Band, which is insane. Wow. So, uh, but the, but the majesty is really the sort of the culmination of our, I think, design relationship together um this i just can't put this guitar down it's it's ridiculous same guitar that i used on terminal velocity as well yeah um and then right next to me on this side is uh there's one song on lte3 that was played with the seven string so that was this song this uh, guitar key so, to the imagination yeah right? exactly yeah. yeah so this is the seven string version of the same guitar i believe this is ember glow this color yeah Which is really beautiful. Cool. I've yeah. seen this guitar. I think this exact guitar when we yeah. saw this uh, guitar setup video with Maddie. Oh, nice. Yeah, we, yeah. we both had a, a seven string Majesty on the, oh, uh, on the bench. And uh, th this has to be exactly that guitar. Maddie That's it. There. So yeah. these are the two guitars on the record. Right. Uh, my amplifier, of course, is my Mesa Boogie Signature JP2C. Let's see. It's b back there. Right Can you there. see yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. Am I pointing to the, in the right direction? Perfect. Yeah, okay. exactly there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, probably that cabinet too. Um, yeah, my, my uh, you know, again, same thing with terminal velocity. My my gear signal chain is just really simple, as probably most people know by now. I mean, I've spent so much time uh, working with these incredible companies developing gear um, to my taste. Of course, in, in the both these guitars are DiMarzio uh, signature pickups, the Dreamcatcher and the Rainmaker, which are just the perfect pickups they just yeah. 
<laughs> Sounds so, so great. So in developing all that gear, you know, the pickups, the guitar, the amplifier, it's to the point where you just plug it in and that's, you know, that's the sound. You don't have to, the search is over as the old, the song goes. Yeah, yeah. From the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just sounds so good. And so, you know, we mic that up and that that's the guitar sound. Uh, of course, our engineer, Jimmy T, is brilliant and he he's able to capture it in, in such a great way using the right mics the and preamps. Yeah, which is yeah. a big part of it, too. But, you know, just plugging the guitar into that amp, that's it. And did you, uh, use, a did you use a lot of effects? Uh, between, uh, a little like bit. Yeah. So, you know, the the uh, the wah pedal I use is my. Yeah. Dunlop Signature JP95 Wah, which is just has this incredibly uh, throaty, aggressive sound. Yeah, yeah. And you can hear that on the record. And speaking of Dunlop, um, of course, the picks I use uh, are signature with them. I have four signature picks that are kind of uh, based off of Jazz 3, which is like my favorite. And the latest one's called the Trinity. And so I use that on the record. Do you have any um, uh, specific moments to use one of your picks or like one is i don't know tonally different or or like more um, for shreddy stuff more for yeah. melodic stuff right i i mean i yes and no i kind of just like i go back and forth between different i have them all sort of laid out and i'll just pick one up and and it i gravitate toward one at one moment and then i'll pick up another one. Oh, this one is so cool yeah, yeah for okay. the for this record and and terminal it was the trinity for for dream theater's uh pre you know latest album distance over time it was all about the flow pick okay. which i just was so in love with um and they're just they're all amazing so it's great to have that arsenal of picks uh tonally they're all great you know they just i don't know i love them it's just part of it is how they feel how they sort of slip off the string yeah uh, but they all have this uh you know the 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 goal is not only the tone of the pick but also the accuracy. So when yeah. you're playing yeah. and trying to play intricate lines or play fast, the pick is going to help you do that. Oh, um, and then you know what? For for this record, um, the not too many effects. I mean, the the effects I use uh, are are pedals that I'll put in front of the amp, um, of course, as opposed. And, yeah, yeah. So of course, my my TC uh, Dreamscape pedal is my favorite chorus pedal. But I also, having said that. Um, use boss pedals, you know, the the I was experimenting with the Waza Dimension C pedal, C. Oh, which yes. is really cool. Or even oh, the yes. Waza Chorus. I, I just love those. Yeah. Um, yeah. A dark glass compressor, um, things like that. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll sort of experiment, you know. There, there's a couple of different ways to go about modulation effects. You know, you could do them post as a plug-in. Exactly. Yeah. Um, which on, on distance over time, again, speaking of that, we use the TC2290 plugin to do a lot of that wide chorusing. Okay. Whereas on my solo album in Liquid Tension and actually the new Dream Theater that we just wrapped, um, it's it's all front end chorus right. because because some, there's something a way it interacts with the distortion and the speaker. Yes. That's just really cool. And also speaking of boss, a phaser as well. Um, all the delays that you're hearing are posts. That's all plugins. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because a delay pedal in the front of an amp is going to just no. get distorted. No, no, yeah. No, sure. And then also, even if I had it in the effects loop, I don't want it printed. Yeah. So all the delays that you hear on the solos are, are done in the mix. So you try to stick to as dry as possible. Yeah. So you have the my, option of spreading the sound or doubling right. it, whether it fits better. Exactly. Or, okay. Yeah, my, my sound is very pure. And then for the rhythms, you know, we always double track. So you'll hear that big, you know, wide left and right sound. Um, yeah, that's it, man. It's it's just working. Yeah. Um, three three albums in a row uh, <laughs> it, during less than a year, I guess. Um, Pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, do it using this same setup, and it's just it's just great. It's just so much fun yeah. to be able to go to the things that you know and love, and and the sound is there. You know, it really absolutely, is fun. absolutely fantastic. I'm so looking forward to. Uh, to listening to the new Dream Theater album as well. Yeah, we we actually uh, we just wrapped a recording of that. Crazy. Um, we had been working on that since October, and um, I am super excited about it. It's not going to come out till later this year. We don't have mm -hmm. any release date information yet. Obviously, as we do, uh, we'll let everybody know. But I am just really really excited, man. I I don't know, like, you know, the pandemic has been 
hard on on a lot of people in the world and as far as that the way it's affected musicians everybody's like wants to play everybody's yeah. pent up there's no yeah. live performances so i feel like uh with all these records that we're doing in the studio you know the dream theater guys came to play like everybody you know <laughs> liquid tension tony and mike yeah. and jordan came to play so the records are filled with energy and excitement and yeah. Yeah. positivity and just you know it, it's i'm excited about it so can't wait Absolutely. for people to hear that as well but exactly. yeah the new the new liquid tension will be out uh shortly <laughs> crazy can we expect uh live dates as soon as that's a thing again with liquid tension yeah now? yeah i mean you know i i think you know once obviously things are slowly coming coming back online um as as the world gets vaccinated and uh you know some venues are starting a little bit of capacity and yeah. kind of you know but as far as it being back to normal normal i you know it there's still some time might take yeah yeah so but so by the time it gets to that um i'm sure the focus will really be on dream theater and our touring schedule and then you know if if the uh situation arises to do some liquid tension dates or even for me to do dates you know to support my solo album yeah, um, yeah, exactly. then, then that'll happen. But it's just so hard to say. Yeah, I mean, you know, the short answer is yes, we'd all love to do it and it'd be fun. Um, but it's just, you know, there's obviously nothing booked or planned just yeah, because yeah. of the state we're in. Yeah. Oh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing you guys around again as soon as Absolutely. possible. Absolutely. <laughs> Me too. It's, it seems like it's been forever. You know, oh, it's just, uh, yeah. I basically have lived in the studio for the past year. <laughs> year. <laughs> um and That's so cool. it'll it'll be good to finally get out when it yeah. does happen we miss everybody you know we we all do and we miss performing you know it's it's oh. it's something we all love to do as musicians so can't wait for to, uh, to get back for things to get back yeah, yeah exactly for sure exactly. i know everybody's exactly. everybody's feeling the same absolutely absolutely but it's so nice to see how many people get creative absolutely and it's one of those things you know you realize how important music is to people's oh. lives i mean not only musicians who who you know, play and perform, but for people that love going to live yeah. shows and yeah. experiencing that. I mean, there's certainly been no shortage of new music, which is cool. Oh, which but is the, yeah. the experience of being in a, a, you know, in a concert setting and watching live performs, I mean, it's a big part of people's lives. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, you're right. That is a positive thing to focus on. It'll all be fun when we get back out there. Oh, um, and so you know, and the, the interesting thing about this too, you know, sometimes, uh, in situations with with individual bands, there might be circumstances that lead them to have to, you know, take off for a while for yeah. whatever reason. But never has it been where every band is in yeah. the same situation, yeah. every single musician, you know, um, it's it's crazy. So, that, yeah, you're right. There's a there's this big pent up, I think, positive energy to to want to get back out there. Oh, absolutely. And share, you know, that's part of the fun. Oh, absolutely. Part of the fun. Absolutely. John, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very Same much for here. taking time for us. I know you, you have a lot to do right now because of the release, and I wish you all the best. I appreciate it. Always great to talk to you, and uh, stay healthy and safe, oh. and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Take thanks care. Thanks for having me. Appreciate bye it. Bye-bye, John. Bye. <laughs> you guys also take it easy, and uh, thanks for joining us for this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit like if you like this video, and we'll meet down in the comment section. Bye-bye.